S200 video lecture. Today we're going to be talking about light data. Don't sleep beyond dawn. Dawn's when the French and Indians attack. All right, this is one of the directives from Major Robert Rogers, who basically started the uh, some of the idea of the Rangers and Special Forces um, back during the Revolution period. Um, we know that at dawn is still one of those times when we do stand to because it's a good time to initiate an attack. Uh, the defenders might be sleeping still. Um, things are kind of dark out and a good time to get people while they're weary or they're doing their morning preparations. All right, we're going to start with two key terms, BMNT and EENT. All right, these are the two key things about light that are going to come up a lot during op orders and your mission planning. All right, what are they? All right, BMNT is Begin Morning Nautical Twilight, also known as Nautical Dawn. All right, that's the period where, uh, with otherwise good conditions, um, you're right at that cusp of just having enough illumination to start to see outlines of things uh, on the ground. All right, now the sun is still below the horizon. We haven't reached sunrise yet. All right, but there's enough light kind of coming around that we can actually start to see things. It's not the mid darkest of night. And then we have EENT, which is end evening nautical twilight. So this is the reverse of that on the other side. So after sunset, there's still some light out. So until the sun drops 12 degrees below the horizon, all right, that's our last available daylight. So from sunset up until EENT, there's still some light out. We can still see things enough to identify what's out on the ground. After EENT, it's dark. All right, that's darkness. All right, now military units may end up treating those two times with heightened security. All right, that's stand to, and we kind of get defensive around that time. All right, that's partly goes all the way back to the French and Indian Wars when combatants on both sides were launching attacks at that time, and it still is a good time for attacking. All right, people are starting to lose the daylight, um, or or there's not enough daylight yet. And um, if you can attack from the east or west, you can play with how the sun is coming in and um, get the drop on people when they're just finishing or starting their day. All right, these are just some examples. So we can start here at, let's say, ODARC 30, 0448. All right, and um, this is back in 2010. Uh, so here's some astronomical twilight would be the term for this. Uh, we can see all the stars. All right, there's really no daylight. As, as far as a person is concerned, I can't see anything. All right, now we do see a little bit of lines out there in the distance. Maybe there is a road or some artificial light that's uh, casting some things we can see. But just the stars is all we got. Uh, now we can go a little bit further. This is nautical twilight. All right, the sun's still not up, but we can see the shape of the ground out there. You can kind of tell some of the shapes that are out behind it. But as we go up in the sky, um, really, this is one of the best times to view stars. All right, and that's why it's called nautical twilight, because they can still see all the stars all the way down to the horizon. We can still see stars at the horizon. Um, but we have enough light to start to discern that there's something on the ground. All right, now, next we can show this would be more of civil twilight. All right, when uh, the sun is still below the horizon, but we've got a lot more light out there. We're starting to lose the ability to see any stars that are in the sky. Um, but we can make out a lot more of what's on the ground. We start to see more features um, and detect things much better. All right, and then we can hit sunrise. Sunrise is right when the sun is on the horizon line. Okay, it's just popped over. Um, and now we've really got kind of the full amount of light that we're going to have during daytime, right? The sun is out. All right, and we can really see well at that point. All right, and then we can get the sun up in the sky. All right. Now, on the flip side, then we get to sunset. When the sun is on the horizon, some stars are starting to peek out up in the higher level. But we can still see really well right at sunset. All right, we can bring that down into nautical twilight. All right, the sun is below the horizon at this point, but we can still start kind of see features of what's out there, bring us back into that nautical twilight right at that limit line of being able to see outlines in the distance of things um, on the horizon. Uh, and get the best view of the stars. After nautical twilight, we're gonna go back to just pitch black. We won't even be able to tell where the horizon line is uh, other than that it won't have stars. Um, okay, so what are you gonna get? Here's the company op order. It's gonna give you this big table 
with a whole bunch of things, right? Now this actually has some weather data in there. We got the highs and lows for each day. And then we're just listing off BEMT, SR, SS, EENT, MR, MS, precipitation and loom. All right, precipitation, high, low, or weather data. All right, so let's talk about the so what of these. What are all these things? So here's that table. And then down on the bottom, I've got a timeline of how much light there is, all right? So the first thing on here is sunset, that's SS, all right? So on this case, on the 1st of September, the sun's gonna set at 1929. So we go from full daylight into our dusk, uh, kind of headed towards our dusk period. All right, so then that dusk is gonna go until we end evening nautical twilight at 2038. So we got about an hour there where we still have some light out that we can see by. All right, at that point it gets black, all right? Now, MR is, um, your moonrise time. All right, so the moon is coming up at 2331. Now, the moon is interesting because it slides all over the place. It is possible that the moon is already up before the sun sets, all right, in which case that max illumination is gonna be earlier and we're not gonna have that no light period first, that no light period will come later, all right? But in this example, all right, the sun has set and the moon is down, so we have the darkest period uh, from 2031 to 2330. All right, that's the darkest it's gonna be. There's nothing out there illuminating anything. At 2331, the moon rises, all right? Now in reality, the moon is gonna be on the horizon and it moves across the sky, just like the sun does, all right? Um, which is gonna affect you know, the reality of, we're not gonna have that full illumination necessarily, or it's gonna be coming from a direction. Now, that illum column tells us what percentage of the moon is illuminated and reflecting for us. All right, so if it's a full moon, we get 100% of loom. And that's, honestly, if you go out in uh, some places, if there's no cloud cover, 100% of loom, you can walk around and see outside in the dark with no NVGs. All right, that's how bright it is. Now, if we have 55% of loom, it's kind of half that brightness is how much uh, light we're going to have. So it might be a little difficult to see. And uh, if it's a new moon and there's 0% of loom, uh, it's going to be pretty dark out. Uh, and, and, and you're not going to have any natural light um, at all coming off. There's no moonlight to see by. All right, so that's going to go all the way in this case up until our begin morning nautical twilight at 0521. All right, when the sun is still below the horizon, we start to get natural light out. All right, and then we can talk about sunrise coming at 0623. So that's how we can read this chart. Now, obviously overnight, we have to move to the next day to figure out when sunrise and nautical twilight is gonna start, all right? Now, but I wanna emphasize again that your moon illumination, you really gotta pay attention to those times because that slides around, okay? You could have that dark period after the moon sets, all right? There is a moon set there, that's what MS is, all right? This lays out all of our times for our mission and lets us know when it's gonna be dark and when we're gonna have some light that we can see by and how much moonlight is gonna be out there. All right, why do we care about this moonlight? All right, so I wanna talk real quick about how MVGs work, all right, night vision goggles, all right? They don't just see in the dark and that's magic, all right? What they actually work off of is called image an image intensifier, all right? All the little tubes that are in there, they require some kind of input in order to work. All right, so they amplify the amount of light that you're seeing. Now, what does that mean? So what? All right, if it's 0% of loom out and you're in that absolute darkest period and you don't have any light source out there, there's nothing for it to amplify. So your NVGs don't work very well when you've got 0% of loom, 1% of loom, all right? And your NVGs are gonna work perfectly well at 55% of loom. And if, if you've got 75% of loom, they're gonna work great because there's a lot of light coming in for them to intensify and amplify into what you see through that MVG, all right? Now there's a nice little YouTube video here. I'll put a link on Blackboard talking about some of the new technologies that are coming out um, and can improve those things. And each generation of night vision goggle works better and can aid you in seeing with lower and lower levels of loom. But just understand that even though you've got night vision goggles, the amount of illumination still matters. All right, so that's our overview on light data and how to use that information to help you plan your mission uh, and to think about how that light might impact you.